Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dal, and in today's video, I wanted to highlight five DPS specs that are looking to get the most amount of gains once the class boss for patch 915 finally drop. Primarily inside of Mythic Plus Dungeons, there's a couple class changes that are always going to affect PvE and PvP, the raiding and arenas, but the Mythic Pluses is where a lot of classes I think are going to see big gains, mostly because of a lot of the AoE on caps for abilities. While not every single spell and ability is going to see its ability range on cap, it is still going to be beneficial for a variety of different specs where you could hit more than 5 targets. A lot of classes are about to just do more damage inside of dungeons just because of some of these updates. While I don't think the general meta of what is the strongest classes inside of Mythic Pluses is really going to change with this patch. However, some specs are definitely going to see noticeable benefits and I really wanted to highlight those specs in today's video. As per usual, if you guys are enjoying these videos but are not subscribed, you might as well hit subscribe, hit the bell. Anyway, let's dive into this 5 spec list. First spec on the list is going to be Warrior primarily as Arms. Maybe some residual benefit from Fury, but Arms is just seeing some of the biggest gains inside a Mythic Plus environment. Right now, Arms Warriors are actually really not bad, as long as they're hitting at least 8 targets, but anywhere more than that, they tend to kind of fail to contribute towards the overall damage output. But Arms Warriors are about to get a pretty nice buff, especially if you play as a Kyrian, because Spear of Bastion is a fantastic ability. The legendary behind Spear of Bastion makes your crits do more damage, which is also really good. Combined together with a personal buff of Avatar, which increases your overall damage output, as well as a debuff of Colossus Smash through Warbreaker, which will not only do a bunch of damage to enemies nearby, but also debuff them so they take more damage. All these enemies will also get your Mastery Bleed on them, so they're taking even more damage from your Mastery, while also bleeding out with damage over time. Go into a full-on Bladestorm, and if Bladestorm crits, it does more damage, while Bladestorm affects every single enemy in front of you, then swap into a new conduit that got buffed for massive whirlwind damage following a Bladestorm. You're looking at a potential big nuke scenario for an arms warrior who will be able to contribute so much more towards the overall damage when it comes to big trash pulls. All of this also on a very short cooldown thanks to the Kyrian Mechanical Soulbind and the cooldown reduction element that it offers towards the Spear of Bastion as well as fairly short cooldown on a lot of your bursty abilities. But also, the single target damage isn't really lost that much either, so Arms Warriors I think are about to become a really big AoE nuke while also carrying very respectable 2 target, 1 target damage. Another spec on this list is a Retribution Paladin. While not always considered by players as a really solid PvE spec, they really are pretty good. Paladins come with the ability of Wings. Wings is where a majority of their damage comes from. In a sense, I've learned to look at Wings almost like a Mage Combustion. This is a moment for the Paladin to shine, and Wings amps up their damage so much that it is going to be reliable and powerful. Paladins, however, so far have had their AoE damage capped, running a legendary that does try to bypass it to some extent, but having the Divine Storm capped completely does hurt him quite a bit, especially since they have so much potential to do a ton of AoE damage. They already have, like an Arms Warrior, so many different modifiers like Seraphim, Final Reckoning, other talents that can amplify your damage even further, maybe even certain covenants like Necrolord, which has seen some buffs with potentially maybe paladins go on necrolord so they can have a lot of good focus damage where usually in the big trash pack when you're pulling the ads on top of a boss you want to make sure that your party is still doing damage to the boss while cleaving massive amounts of damage to anything nearby and paladin might be the class to be able to do that extremely well which is a valuable damage profile that classes are looking to output inside of dungeons but even if you are just looking at raw aoe damage during wings where you can affect every single target empowered by a variety of buffs and debuffs like Seraphim and debuffs like Final Wreck, you're looking at a Retribution Paladin which might be one of the biggest nukes come 915, but also they get immunity so your tank doesn't even need to worry about aggro too much because they got it covered. The next spec on this list is going to be Beast Mastery Hunter. Not really a spec that's super popular within PvE, a whole nother story inside of arenas and battlegrounds, but Beast Mastery Hunters are getting a lot of the AoE abilities uncapped. Talking about Beast Mastery, sometimes it's really difficult not to mention Marksman because Beast Mastery, even with these changes, I think is still to some extent going to live in the shadow of Marksman. Marksman just has been insanely good so far in the expansion and I think it'll continue being really, really good in Shadowlands for a while. But Beast Mastery is seeing gains within Mythic Plus Department because of its AoE damage. 
The damage that it does with its Beast Cleave is actually pretty good of sustained AoE. It's mostly a single target focus spec in terms of having decent sustained single target damage, but the AoE is just kind of extra splash damage around the primary target, which again, we talked about before, the Paladin profile. You'll be able to focus down the strongest mob in the trash bag while doing equal cleave damage to everybody else. Beastmaster is going to see some benefits out of it. Beastmaster also has aspects of different covenants to play with that are more single target oriented or more AoE oriented, so that's also going to play into the overall AoE damage output. What I think is going to allow Beastmaster to maybe be more considered is the fact that you do run with a pet. While Marksman drops the pets completely for more damage, Marksman and Hunters in general are notoriously known for being some of the squishiest classes in the game. Hunter just doesn't survive mechanics super well, especially when enemies keep focusing them like bosses or even certain trash ads. So Hunter's survivability is always an issue. Beastmaster at least is going to be able to come with a pet that can increase your overall health by 7%. It might not be a lot, but every single defensive counts, so for Beast Mastery, it could mean slightly more survivability, but also having their damage uncapped in AoE is at least going to allow them to be somewhat more competitive and hopefully we'll see more beast mastery hunters in the future another class and spec well actually two are going to be assassination and subtlety rogues having both of these specs be mostly uncapped in aoe is going to be big gains for both of them outlaw is still capped but subtlety and assassination are looking very very exciting because of the fact that they'll be able to affect multiple enemies Let's first start off with Assassination, which is the more of a the ugly duckling of three specs inside of Mythic Pluses. Assassination is just not a popular spec for Mythic Plus. It's not terrible, it's not F tier, but it's not completely like competitive tier either. But these changes are going to affect Assassination, mostly because Assass comes with a lot of damage over time abilities, like Deadly Poison. It applies to every single mob. Normally with Phantom Lives, you're limited to eight targets that you can poison on enemies. So opening this up to more than eight provides a couple things. One, poison increase to the actual every single individual enemy they'll each have a poison dot on them which means more damage being able to build comp points easier since you have more targets and if phantom nice crits on enough enemies it's full five comp points so lots of finishes for you to churn out defensive benefits of maybe being able to run crippling poison inside your mythic pluses so you can apply a slow for your tank to kite easier you're also looking at Crimson Tempest also applying to everybody in AoE, as well as a Zaldic Legendary amping up all those poisons and bleed damage on top of it all. Being able to affect more enemies for assassination, I think is going to allow them to at least put up more AoE damage, while having a fantastic single target profile with Vendetta. For Subtlety, it does allow them even more AoE damage, and Subtlety has risen to quite a bit of prominence, especially inside of MDIs. They're pretty good spec for pushing, but for speed, this is the spec you want to play. It has a focus play cell where you'll funnel comp points into singular eviscerates on whatever is the main target, which allows them quite a bit of single target focus damage. But now with the AoE uncapped, it allows them even more AoE damage output. And already the spec started to gain a lot of popularity with 9-1, and in 9-1-5 I think it's going to wear the crown as the deserved rogue mythic plus spec. Finally, and I think this is no surprise, Windwalker Monks. They're already really, really good, so I don't know why Blizzard decided to uncap their spinning crane kick. I think every monk out there is really happy about this change because I think this is going to secure them as the spot for probably the strongest melee in Mythic Pluses. Because prior to this change, they already were. With Storm Earth and Fire, in a sense, they can bypass their AoE caps because you have all these different monk images that can affect multiple enemies, especially when you get really powerful spinning crane kick procs. Together with Bone Dust Broom, that doesn't already have a cap, with Zawen that I don't believe has a cap either, you were already bypassing these AoE caps, and now you're looking at a spec that doesn't have any caps whatsoever. It's going to gain so much more damage, and it's already one of the strongest specs for Mythic Pluses, especially when you pull everything together and nuke it down. So this spec, I think, is going to be extremely dominant. It already is really, really good, but this one I think is going to probably have the most amount of gains of all the different DPS. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you think I missed a spec that should have been on this video, let me know in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And I will know that the majority of these specs in this video was melee classes, except for Beast Mastery. A lot of the range classes already have majority of their AoE toolkit uncapped. So you are seeing also popularity of the range, as they can say, at super far range and hit everybody. And I think this is going to allow some of the melee classes probably some of the biggest gains in 915. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see all of you in the next video.